Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equation. We have x to the power 45 equals 243 to the power x squared. And we're going to be looking for x values. Now, how do you solve an equation, li equation like this? First of all, it's pretty non-standard because we have different bases. One of them is exponential. One of them is kind of polynomial. So we have a non-standard type of equation. So let's go ahead and consider the following. You probably know, hopefully, that 243 is a power of 3. If you think about it, it's 3 times 81, and since 81 is 3 to the 4th power, 3 times 81 should be 3 to the 5th power. Something to keep in mind, something to memorize. And also, I hope you noticed that 45 is divisible by 5. Why do I need that information? Because take a look. I can go ahead and write the x to the power 45 as x to the power 9 to the power 5 because 9 times 5 is 45, right? For that reason. And on the right hand side, I have 243, which I can write as 3 to the fifth power. And then, of course, I need to raise it to the power x squared. Get it? Now, since we, when we have something like a to the power b to the power c, that can be written as a to the power c to the power b because it's going to give us bc every time. We can go ahead and switch these around and write this as 3 to the power x squared to the power 5. Now, if you forget about the middleman and just set these two things equal to each other, you can realize that they both have the fifth powers and we can easily eliminate them. The reason why I say easily is because if we had an even power, then we would have to consider the absolute value the two solutions that come from there. But in this case, we don't really have to worry about it. Of course, I'm not looking for complex solutions. If you're looking for complex solutions, then you can definitely do those. But this channel is not dedicated to complex numbers. There's another channel called A plus BI, which is dedicated to complex numbers. You can go ahead and check it out. That's one of my channels. Great. So now we have a simpler version of the original equation. But not only that, this is also very good. You know why? Because 9 is 3 squared. Why is that important? Well, you can kind of write it as 3 to the second power and set it equal to 3 to the power x to the power 2. And you're probably going to realize, uh-oh, this equation looks easy to solve. Don't you think? I mean, if you don't see what I'm talking about, let's go ahead and write it in a different form. I can take it from here and just natural log both sides. And then this is going to bring down the exponents. So this is going to give me 9 ln x equals x squared ln 3. And then put the ln x and x squared together, like variables on the same side and numbers on the other. Have you noticed that x equals 3 works? I hope so, because it does. Why? If you look at it, if x is 3, then x squared is 9, so 1 to 1 correspondence. Yes, x equals 3 is definitely a solution. But the million dollar question is, is that the only solution, right? That's a good question. And we're going to try to answer that. So how can we tell if there are any other solutions? Well, at least we found one solution, but we don't know if there's any other solutions, right? But let me tell you something. If you consider the graph of this as a function, in other words, f of x equals ln x over x squared, which is kind of similar to ln x over x, slightly different curves differently. It's going to look like something like this, okay? It's going to come up this way and then go down and then kind of curve like this. Make sense? What does this tell you? This should tell you that for certain y values, we have two x values. In other words, the graph does not pass the horizontal line test, which checks for injectivity or one-to-oneness. So this function is not one-to-one, -one, which means we're able to get the same y value from two different x's. In other words, x equals 3 may not be the only solution. And I say may not be because it depends. For example, if your y value was here, then you would have a tangent line and there would be only one x value. Or if it was above, that would be no solution. So it really depends on where you hit the graph. 
here, again, there would be one solution, right? Because our graph is not going to go below the x-axis for certain reasons, because if x is greater than 1, ln x is positive, x squared is positive, so y values are always going to be positive. Can they be 0? Yes, at x equals 1, actually, they're going to be 0, so things might change a little bit. Anyways, this is not necessarily true. I just, you know, speculate that it's going to have an intersection, a single introduction point based on what I can graph. Anyway, so how do we approach the other solution? So we can definitely use something special, uh, but let me go ahead and see how we can manipulate this equation. First of all, I'd like to use a special function. You know what it is called? It's called Lambert's W function. And it's usually used in situations like, okay, if t e to the t is equal to a constant, then we apply Lambert's W on both sides, and then Lambert's W gives us the output t, so we kind of get the solution right away. C is a constant in this case, but it could be any number. So our goal is going to be that. So from here, can I get something that looks like t to the t? And the answer is yes. But we have to do a couple different things. One of them is square root both sides. But I don't like that. Instead, I'm going to use substitution. So let's go ahead and set x squared equal to t. This means x is equal to square root of t. You've got to be very careful here, by the way. By setting this, you're assuming that t is positive. So the square root of t is also positive, which means x is positive. But does x have to be positive? Yes, because of the natural log function. Make sense? So everything works. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Replace x with square root of t and x squared with t. Right-hand side doesn't have to be changed. Let's leave it at that for now. Oops. I magically or mathematically turned the 9 into a 3, not yet. And then we're going to go ahead and write this as follows. The goal was to get something like t to the t, right? We're going to get there. So square root of t is t to the power 1 half. And now what I can do now is bring the 1 half to the front, right? And when I do that, I get 1 half of ln t divided by t equals ln 3 over 9. But then I can eliminate the one half by multiplying both sides by two. And guess what? That does the trick. You can now move back, make it an exponent. And this gives you ln t over t equals ln nine over nine, because this is two ln three over nine, which is ln three squared over nine and three squared, as you know, is nine. Awesome. <laughs> kind of going around the circles, right? We get t equals nine from here, which means because x was square root of t, from here, x becomes a 3. But we already know that, right? Hopefully, because it was kind of obvious. But what about the other solution? That's a good question. Now, we're going to go ahead and take this equation, write it in a form where we can apply Lambert's W because we haven't applied it yet, right? So let's go ahead and do that. First, I'm going to write the 1 over t as t to the power negative 1. And then the right-hand side is a constant. Either you set it equal to c or just keep writing it. No big deal. And then I need an ln t to the power negative 1. These t's have to be the same. So how can I achieve that? I can basically multiply both sides by negative 1. And that negative 1 actually considered is considered a power. We can bring it over here and write this as ln t to the power negative 1. Good, but what is t? What is e to the t? Well, I guess t is used a little differently here. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that I was using the same variable. But my goal is to write t to the power negative 1 as what? as e to the power ln t to the power negative 1. That works, right? Because e to the power ln x is x. So now we're good on both sides. Notice that this negative disappears because we made it an exponent. And now if I apply Lambert's W function on both sides, then the left-hand side will simplify because this is going to be my new t now, or x or k, whatever. Let's just call this k and apply w to k e to the k like kek and which means cake in turkish by the way it's interesting and this will this will become k make sense so when you apply it it's going to be ln t to the power of negative one equals w of negative ln nine over nine bring this negative one to the front multiply both sides by negative one you're going to get negative w of negative ln nine over nine a lot of negativity doesn't necessarily mean t is negative but then we're going to do e to the power of both sides. t is going to be e to the power of negative w, negative ln 9 over 9. That's a constant. You can plug it in into a calculator. 
use product log if you're using Wolfram Alpha, and then you should be getting the answer from there. But guess what? This is not the answer because X is supposed to be what? Square root of T. Remember the substitution? So X is supposed to be the square root of this expression. And let me know what you get from here because I'm about to show you the actual numerical solution. Of course, X equals three is a solution. I already told you about that, but there is another solution which you're gonna find out on the graph. Well, it's kind of not easy to see, but there are two intersection points. And this is the solution you've been looking for. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care and bye bye.